going on, Stellar Crew? Bob MacArthur here for Stellar View Telescopes for the September 24 edition of In the Sky. So here we are, it's September, we're inching our way to fall, the nights are getting longer, the days are getting shorter, more time for observing. Well, at least for us in the Northern Hemisphere, our friends in the Southern Hemisphere, their nights are actually getting shorter and their days are getting longer as they're going into spring and in the summer. But here in the Northern Hemisphere, we are entering fall. What I love about fall is we can still get that Milky Way with the summertime constellations in September. But as, this, as, this, as the night goes on, we start tapping into those fall constellations like Pegasus and Andromeda and Perseus. Some wonderful constellations for us to observe. We also have some planets entering into the, into the scene this month. So we'll talk about that. Now, one thing we're gonna start doing every quarter, every season, is we're gonna check in with Stellar Views president, Vic Maris, and do a fun little segment called, What's Up With Vic? So let's see what's going on with Vic, and let's see what's going up in the sky for September, 2024. Hi, Bob. I'm here in the Figuring and Metrology Lab. We're currently putting together a video on the SVX-152T. We're going to take about a month and we're going to show people exactly how this telescope performs. We're very proud of it. And speaking of pride, I'm really proud of the fact that we can have you doing these in the sky videos. Having somebody who is a science teacher, who really knows, not only knows his stuff, but actually is super inspired by the night sky really makes a difference so thank you for doing that one of the things i wanted to do with this video today was to show a very important ingredient that we have here at stellar view when it comes to producing quality optics we've shown the machines we've shown the test equipment we've shown the process but what we haven't shown are the people who make a difference when you order a Stellar View SVX-180 and it arrives, your neighbors will think that you just bought a new refrigerator. It'll take you an hour to unpack it, and when you do, you'll see that it's in perfect condition. And for this, you can thank Ariel, who uses foam like a Jenga puzzle. Ariel is an amateur astronomer who handles our logistics, orders, and shipping. He knows firsthand how important it is to safely pack our telescopes. John graduated with a degree in organizational communication. John works on our website, social media, product photography, editing, and he writes our monthly newsletter. If you've not yet subscribed to Stellar View's monthly newsletter, you really should. Every month we publish an article on a stellar person who is a Stellar View owner just like you using their telescope to do fun and amazing things. Vanessa is our assembler and quality control person at Stellar View. She assembles and packages various telescope parts, assembles our mounts, and she cleans and inspects our telescopes. Last but not least is Alex, our master optician. Alex hand figures optics here at Stellar View, supervises production, assists customers, and like the rest of us, he keeps an open mind, learning more each day and applying that knowledge in creative, practical, and innovative ways. So our company is small but mighty, and we operate with a great sense of pride. We are a Stellar family. But there are, are many more people involved in Stellar View outside of these walls. Our lens designer has many decades of experience, and everything he develops for us has new capabilities. Once we have the perfect design, we need to make sure it is implemented correctly. We build prototypes and we have a small band of dedicated Stellar View owners who test them for us to make sure they perform exactly as expected. Thanks to all of you, you know who you are. You make us better. Finally, there is one group of people most responsible for this 25 year adventure we've been on, our customers. Everyone who works here at Stellar View understands that we exist for and because of you. That is why we are here to help you get the most out of your equipment, and we are only an email or a phone call away. We are friends for life. Thank you. What's going on, Stellar Crew? Let's talk about what we got going on this month in the sky for September 2024. 
it is a busy month. We got the moon and planets doing a bunch of stuff, so let's get to it. On September 5th, we have a thin waxing crescent moon sitting with Venus. It's going to be really low on the horizon, but it's kind of fun to see Venus and the moon pairing up and also getting Venus into the night sky watching those phases. So check that out. September, uh, the night of September 7th and 8th, Saturn is at opposition, meaning Saturn's going to be up all night long. It's going to rise at sunset and set at sunrise. So you have that, that sun, earth, Saturn aligned. Time to do it. If you haven't seen Saturn yet, it is time to get going. And Saturn's fun to look at right now because the rings are kind of edge on. And you can see the moons. So check out Saturn. Uh, on September 9th, Mercury and Regulus, uh, brightest star in Leo, right before sunrise, are going to be a half a degree from one another. If you got a good view of that eastern horizon, it's going to be a really uh, cool show to see those two, uh, that cl closest planet to the sun, brightest star in Leo, right next to each other. September 16th, the almost full moon is going to be right there next to Saturn. I uh, love seeing those pair up. But what's awesome is later on that night, that morning, September 17th, before sunrise, the moon is actually going to occult Saturn. So it's our turn here in the United States to be able to get that opportunity to watch the moon pass in front of Saturn right there before sunrise. So uh, check that out. Now, I have a website, a couple websites down at the bottom there, timeanddate.com and lunaroccultations.com. I love both of those websites. If you want to know when and where and what time the uh, lunar occultations are happening, that's a good website. And then timeanddate.com is a great website for all things eclipses, solar, lunar, from your location, what time. I say this because on September 17th, we also have a partial lunar eclipse. It's not going to be deep at all. I mean, the moon barely goes into the umbra. So a little bit of darkening on, on the moon's limb there. But if you go again, go to timeanddate.com, you can find out when and uh, where it's visible for you. So there you go. And then on the evening of September 17th and 18th, the waning gibbous moon is going to occult Neptune. Now, this is going to be a little more challenging because Neptune is like a seventh, eighth magnitude planet. Um, but it's going to be visible for us here. But it, that bright, like pretty much full moon is going to go right in front of Neptune. Uh, so ch see, ch check that. That would be a good observing challenge. And then on, on September 20th and 21st, Neptune is in opposition. So two planets, opposition, September, planet season is coming. All right. Uh, now, September 22nd, first day of fall, my favorite season. Love that cool weather. Love the longer night for more observing. Uh, so September 22nd is the autumnal equinox. Uh, for us in the northern hemisphere, first day of fall. For our friends in the southern hemisphere, first day of spring. So they're getting longer days, warmer weather. Um, so here we go. It's uh, Northern Hemisphere uh, observing season. So uh, let's have some fun. Uh, September 23rd through 25th, we're going to watch that waning gibbous moon dance from uh, Jupiter to Mars in the early morning. So in the early morning, we got Jupiter and Mars. In the evening, we got Neptune and uh, Saturn. Uranus is also in the mix in the morning. So get out there and see those planets. Speaking of planets, let's talk about what we got going on for the solar system. The sun is just going off. It has been so fun to watch the sun. We had some great auroras in the northern part of the United States um, at the end of August and yeah, a couple of times in August. So I really like spaceweather.com as a, as a website to go to to see what's going on with solar activity. Um, find out what geomagnetic storms are, where the sunspots are, solar flare activity. Uh, the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, or the National Weather Service uh, Space Weather website is another good website to see what's going on with the sun. So there you go. Now, let's talk about the planets. You know, Mercury, nice pairing with Regulus in the morning. And then you have Venus starting to make its show in the, uh, in the evening sky. Saturn and uh, Neptune at opposition. And then in the early morning, you got Uranus and Jupiter and Mars. So many good things, but I think Saturn's going to be the show right now. Uh, if you've never seen Saturn when the, the rings are edge on, it's really cool to see that. And then you get the moons next to it. Occasionally you get a Titan, uh, Titan shadow. It's Saturn, seeing Saturn with rings edge on is really, is really, it's weird, 
uh, but it's pretty cool too. <laughs> so Sky and Telescope, if you just Google like Sky and Telescope Saturn moons, they have a wonderful little website and observing tool that'll tell you what moons you're seeing. Uh, same thing with Jupiter, I'll do it with Jupiter too. So you can find out, okay, there's, there's Mimas or there's Titan. And with Jupiter, you can find out when get, or where Ganymede and Callisto are. Really cool moon observing tool if you want to find out uh, what, what moons you're seeing. Now, we got this comet. This comet is it's a first timer in the inner solar system. Um, I, I, honestly, I really don't want to try and pronounce it. So we have uh, Comet Atlas C2023A3. It's a first time visitor from the Oort cloud. There's some um, estimates out there that it could, could get naked eye brightness and even daytime brightness. So keep an eye on that one. I really like the sky live, not just for comets, but for minor planets, uh, things like that. So check out this comet. It could put on a good show. And then there's your moon phases. The new moon, September 3rd. So that's your dark sky weekend. The full moon this month is the harvest moon. The harvest moon definition is the full moon closest to the autumnal equinox. Well, the autumnal equinox is September 22nd. Full moon occurs on September 18th. So we got the harvest moon this month. So there you go. Now let's shift into some dark sky or deep sky stuff. We have star clusters. I, I could list so many star clusters. That, that's what's great about September is we're still hanging on to that like summertime Milky Way season. So you got all those star clusters in the galactic center all the way up through Aquila and, 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 and Cygnus up into, you know, now you're getting actually now into Cassiopeia and Cepheus. So a lot of great star cluster stuff, M39 and Cygnus, M29 and Cygnus. I love M11, the wild duck cluster down there in uh, Aquila. So there you go. Um, M25, Sagittarius. Now what's great is um, the image that we have posted here is a uh, NGC 663 or Caldwell Object 10. Beautiful cluster there up in Cassiopeia. And now we're starting to get into Cassiopeia and Perseus. Uh, we got globular star clusters. M13, I didn't put it on there, but M13 and Hercules, still really good viewing. So that is just a wonderful globular, but we got M13 or M15 up uh, in Pegasus and then kind of lower in the sky, sky down uh, in Aquarius, we have M2. So wide variety of open star clusters and uh, globulars to look at. I love looking at uh, open star clusters and globulars through my refractors because just the pinpoint stars and the color coming out, go for it. Again, with the Milky Way being placed the way it is, it's also a great time to look at nebula. So many nebulas out there. Uh, and again, I could just go on. So I just threw down some highlights. And I'm sure you all have some of your favorites too. So M8, the Lagoon Nebula, still up there. That's one of my personal favorites. I've been looking at that one since I was a kid. You get uh, M17, the Omega Nebula, Swan Nebula. I, I, like, I like that one. Plus you have really good emissions. Both of these image really well too. And then you have M20, uh, the Trifid, images really well because you get that reflection nebula with the emission nebula. Put the veil in there because the veil is such a fun object to look at visually and try and snap pictures. And then the Cocoon Nebula down in Cygnus. Um, yeah, I mean, again, there's so many nebulas. This month's picture I put up there was the Elephant Truck Nebula, which is starting to come up in Cepheus. So Cepheus and Cassiopeia have some great objects to hit. And I, I got it. we got Ring Nebula still. I mean, M57, you have the Dumbbell, M27. So this is such a busy time because, like I said, you still have that Milky Way, and then you're tapping into the fall stuff now. So there we go. Now, galaxies, you know, the, the, this is a little challenging season for galaxies. I mean, some of you could argue with that. Of course, we have M31 making its appearance more. Uh, if you have M31, the Andromeda Galaxy, you got M33, the Triangulum Galaxy. But I don't want to talk about those every month because there are some other galaxies out there. Um, like this really sweet uh, trio of galaxies up here in Draco, as uh, this month's picture shows. NGC 5985, NGC 5982, and NGC 5981. Sweet little galaxy group. You have... Um, NGC 6946, also Caldwell 12, the Firework Galaxy. Um, I, I put that one up, I believe, last month. You have the Splinter. I like this one. I actually just uh, hit this one this, this year. Um, it's like, oh, that's a cool little galaxy, NGC 5906. 
Now, there's Stefan's Quartet. This is a fun little object to get. Depending on your skies, depending on your scope, you can get them. They're little, little fuzzies there, and I would love to see some pictures. Um, let's get some pictures of Stefan's Quartet. Um, I, I, I'd like to see what the Stellar Crew can do with that one. And then, of course, there it is, the Andromeda Galaxy. Ah, it's, uh, it's a really good one, really beautiful galaxy to look at. Um, and it's only going to get better as we get into the winter season. So there you go. And lastly, we got the binaries. You know I got to throw out my binaries and uh, multiple stars. All right, you got Omicron Cygni. Cool binary to check out. Great separation. Nice little color. Um, it's kind of, you know, get up there in the top part of Cygnus and you'll find it. It's a, it's a, it's a cool binary for sure. And then you can pop on uh, over to Alpha Capricornus. Great binary. Now this one is a nice separation, about a fourth magnitude, some nice uh, yellow color to it. And then you can swing on down, or I guess swing on up over <laughs> to Delta Cephe and uh, check out Delta Cephe. Delta Cephe is great because you have a, a, a you have a, a magnitude difference. You got a third magnitude and a sixth magnitude, and they have a, a nice uh, separation also. And then um, you have Zeta Aquarii. I really like Zeta Aquarii because these are tight. They're pretty close to one another, and um, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fun one to look at, kind of a, a yellowish-white binary system to look at. So check out these binaries. And, you know, we still got a lot of good ones. You have the double-double up in Lyra. You have um, Alberio and Cygnus. So there's still a lot of really good uh, uh, binaries to check out. So, uh, yeah, get out there and check out some binaries. All right, y'all, here, I mean, it's September. I love September. I love the cooler weather. Um, you throw that hoodie on and you can go out and observe. And just that kind of feel of fall. You, know, you feel that season changing. And we have those longer nights now, 12 hours in the northern hemisphere and getting longer as we go through the fall. And uh, you know, now we're getting some of those fall constellations in, still some of the summertime stuff. There's something really fun about fall uh, and, and the weather change and the constellations and objects that are up. So set up your scopes, do some imaging, share your images with us on, on Stellar View's um, message board or on social media. We want to see what you're getting. Let us know what, uh, what you're observing. It's, it's fun to build that community and see what we're doing. So yeah, I really appreciate y'all tuning in uh, every month to see what we got going on. So if you like what we're doing, go ahead and you know, like, subscribe to our channels so we know. Also, if you have any suggestions on things to observe, let us know. You know, we're, we're all kind of that you know, I say stellar crew, but also just part of the astronomy and observing family. So again, like and subscribe and keep looking up.